Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Moonlight Shadow by the awesome Mike Oldfield. And there's some terrific guitar solos in this song, which we're not going to be covering it today, but I have transcribed the solos as well, and it's something I'm going to be doing in a later lesson for you, but I figured we should do the rhythm guitar part for this, because it's a lovely tune. Uh, great fun to play as well, and it's got a really interesting rhythm technique called framing that gets used in the, in the chorus there, so we'll spend a bit of time uh, looking at that as well. But first of all, let's have a look at the chords, keeping it nice and simple, four down strums to the bar. Uh, we're starting off with a C chord for a bar, this is the little intro part, then G chord for a bar, Half a bar of A minor, that's two strums, half a bar of F, and then another bar of G. Now before we go any further, I want to explain this G chord as well, in case some of you aren't familiar with that. So I'm not using my first finger here. Actually, I'm not really using my second finger either. I'm just using my third finger on the third fret of the thickest string. Okay, that's three frets above the capo. Uh, and then it, I'm laying it over a little bit to mute the fifth string. And the reason I'm doing that is because often that note played with the second finger gets a little bit muddy in a, in a full chord. For me that note's just a little bit muddy sounding, so I think it sounds quite nicer to leave it out. So third finger's playing that note on the third fret, muting the fifth string. You probably won't be able to help it muting, you shouldn't have to try too hard. Then we've got the three open strings, open four third second strings, a little finger down on the third fret of the thinner string. It's a lovely way of playing a G chord, particularly when you've got lots of C chords and F chords, because it just means that your hand kind of stays in the same kind of position. You don't have to move around with your thumb too much, because moving to this G, you can see from the C chord, especially if thumb's hanging around over the top, which for many of you it will be, then to move to the G chord, thumb's got to come back around. The whole hand position kind of changes, so it's a really nice way to learn this G chord like this, this just using the third and fourth fingers. So uh, that intro again, C to G. A minor, F to G. And then we're into the verse. The A minor that she ever F him. Ging away to her C to G chord. The A minor worried and a F in. Ging away to her C to G chord. Okay, I'm going to do that one more time. There's some interesting uh, blends there when you, you uh, mix up the chords of the lyrics, but uh, really important that you get this stuff right, and really a good idea with this kind of song is to write down the chord progression just without the lyrics there, so you can see kind of how they work, like this one, bar of A, a minor, bar of F, bar of G, then C, G, half a bar each, and it repeats that. So if you can start to see the way that the chords kind of repeat, I think it's a really good idea as well. So, uh, one more time through that verse, three, four, A minor, that she ever F in G away by a C to G chord A minor for a bar then we're going to F chord G chord away to a C to G chord the pre-chorus C chord and a riddle last G chord nine A minor F to a G chord side he was C chord in the middle of a G chord five, and she A minor for two, F for two, and then a bar of G. Okay, again the pre-chorus definitely worth writing that out. A bar of C, a bar of G, A minor F, just two beats each, and then a bar of G, and it's repeating that same sequence again for the pre-chorus. So you've got one four-bar sequence for the verse, one four-bar sequence for the pre-chorus, and now we're into the chorus, which is going to be another four-bar chord sequence. But this one's got a little bit more tricky stuff going on in the chorus. Um, and I'm going to show it to you again, of course, just without the, the framing, the diddling part, uh, and just look at really the straight ahead chords. So we've got a G for one strum, then a C, and back to G for two. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, and it does that twice, okay, at the beginning of this four bar sequence. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, then C for half a bar, F for the other half of the bar, and then a bar of G. Again, G, C, G, G, C, G, C, F, G, two, and again, G, C, G, G, C, G, C, F, G, two, three, four. Okay, it's really important that you're able to do that kind of strumming and get the chords right, just with the really, really simple down things. If you, as soon as we start making the strumming patterns more complicated, 
it's going to make it a lot harder to be able to play that kind of sequence. So you really want to make sure you can do pretty much the whole song all along the all the way through with the original recording, just with the simple down strums. I really recommend that as being a good way to kind of progress with the song. Learn the chords basic, keep the rhythm right, play along with the original recording, get the feel of it right, make sure you can change chords fast enough, and then come back and revisit adding in any more complicated rhythms that you might want to you know check out because tune like this lots of different rhythms you can use I'm going to show you a specific one I think that works really well so that's that's the chord sequences there's a couple of different ver versions of the song available like a single version which is a lot shorter um, so with those different chord sequences it's the same uh, chords for the solos as well either the verse chorus or the uh, the verse the pre-chorus or the chorus chord sequences so just use your ears and have a listen to it and you should be able to pick out which uh, which chord sequence is going on where um, so let's start to have a little look at the rhythm. So the rhythm that I'd recommend really as a starting point here is doing even eighth notes. So one and two and three and four and down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. But then putting a bit of an accent on beats two and four. It doesn't have to be too heavy, but just enough to kind of make it work. So uh, let's do it with the intro chord sequence, which is the C, G, a minor F and then G again, which is the same as the one that we use for the pre-chorus, by the way, in case you hadn't noticed. So C, G, A minor, F, G, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, one, 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 Make sure that you get it kind of feeling nice and relaxed. Your hand, your strumming hand should be feeling nice and easy and nice and relaxed. Doing it with this kind of muted strumming thing is a really, really good way of just making sure that you're locked into the groove nicely. Again, playing along like this all of the way through with the original recordings. Also a great idea. Takes away the stress of the chord changes, really lets you kind of feel like you're in the pocket and make sure your groove's right. And then You know, it's really important this rhythm stuff you know so making sure that you can play the chords with the even down strums first because what you don't want to be doing is playing your rhythm and then having to pause between chords you know going so you can hear it just doesn't work right you know you've really the, the rhythm is where it's all at you know so make sure that you practice the chords enough that you don't have to stress yourself about the rhythm now when it comes to the chorus, things get a little bit more complicated for the for the rhythm. That's the, that kind of even eighth note thing works for pretty much the whole tune, except for the choruses. Uh, and I think actually on the original recording, I can hear there's one guitar that just sticks with the original kind of part, the, this even eighth notes. But there's another kind of more dominant electric part that comes in doing. So it's a kind of a nice thing to add into your strumming. It kind of gives it a bit of a lift and. As usual, it's kind of nice to break up the uh, the chorus a little bit and have something a bit different rhythmically going on, just to kind of pick it up for the listener a bit. Um, so let's talk about this framing now. This. So what it is is a really fast down and up, and it's kind of double the normal speed of the arm movements that you're doing. Okay, so excuse me. Normally your hand's going to be moving at a really consistent rate. One and two and three and four and it almost doesn't matter what strumming pattern you're doing, at this tempo your hand's going to be moving at this speed, right? But what we're going to be doing is just doubling it up. So going one and two and three and four and a one and two and three and four and a one and two and three. And again, let's break it down, keep it nice and simple with the, the, the muted strumming first of all. I'm going to do it a bit slower now. Get you guys to play along if you can. It's a really nice thing to be able to do is to play along with me if you've got your guitar in front of you. Learn how to do it and start to play along. So we're going to be going one and two and three and four and a one and two and three and four. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, down, up.
And what you're really looking for here is to get this little, it becomes kind of like a flick. Right? All we're doing actually, just so, so you understand what's happening, normally we'd be making sure that every down strum is happening on the beat, on the one, two, three, and the four, and the ands would be up. So one, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. But of course, we've already got our maximum down and up there. So to double up, what we're going to be doing is doing a down strum on the and after four, then a faster up strum to arrive back with our down strum on beat one. That's what's happening. If I do it really slowly so you can see, that'd be one and two and three and four and a one and two and three and four and a one and... So you can see that the speed of my arm is doubling just for that one little bit. And it becomes, as it gets faster, It becomes more of a kind of a like a little reaction that you can put in there because you don't want to lose that movement of the hand. So it's somehow with a bit of practice, it doesn't feel like you're making it all disjointed. Because I often tell people like you should never ever stop your hand moving consistently. And this is the kind of thing where you kind of are, but you're trying to make it feel like you're not. And that only comes with practice. Okay. So what's happening is. As I said, this is happening on the and after four, and it's happening going into that first chorus. So we're on a G chord in the pre-chorus. Uh, a minor, F, G, two, three, four, and a one, two, three, four, and a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and a one, two, three, four, and a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, it's definitely something to practice. This. It's a real, you can use it in lots of other songs, not just this one. You, now that you know what it is, I call it framing. I'm not sure if it's got another kind of proper word. Um, but uh, you'll hear it in lots of other songs. There's many instances where you can use this kind of technique. It's a little bit kind of beyond beginner level, I guess, but it's a nice thing to have in, you know, it's only because the tempo really that makes it a little bit hard in this song. There's lots of other songs that will be slower where you'll find that this can be a really, really effective technique and actually not that difficult. So uh, I definitely recommend Plan along, keeping it real simple first of all, simple down strums, then work on your even eighth notes and trying to get a bit of an accent going on there. And remember the best way to do that is to cover up all the strings, take the chords out of the equation, and then start working on this framing of the chords. Again, extract it, trying to take, if there's something that's difficult in a song, try and pull it out and practice that one thing by itself. So just practicing going one and two and three and four and a one and two and three and four and a one and two, three, four and a one. Really good practice. Did a double frame there accidentally because I was trying to talk at the same time. That's the kind of, doing this kind of um, framing stuff and singing or talking at the same time is I still find a little bit weird. Uh, I like to keep my hand moving the same way all the time. But really, really good little technique this one. So I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fun with it. And I'll see you for plenty more lessons, including for the solos. You get got to heavily request these solos, man, if you want them, because it's going to take quite a lot of effort for me to uh, pin all of this out and make them just right. You know, be a long lesson as well, but I think it's totally worth it. Um, you should, and, and definitely you should have a little go at uh, transcribing the solos on your own as well, just incidentally, to really, really nice solos. There's nothing to... The first one definitely should be pretty easy for most people. The second one's got quite a lot of string bending and a few uh, arpeggios and stuff where a few notes ring together is a little bit more tricky, but uh, you know, really, really good one for you to be working out on your own as well. So uh, see you for plenty more lessons and songs very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.